One of the notable omissions in the narrative is the lack of information regarding the death of Cain. While the deaths of Abel, Adam and Seth are documented in Genesis 5, 3 to 8, Cain's death remains unmentioned. This absence raises theological questions, particularly concerning the lack of punishment for Abel's murder if Cain never faces death or only experiences natural death. Such a scenario would seemingly contradict the directives of Genesis 9, 6 and Exodus 21, 12, 14, 24, which prescribe capital punishment for premeditated murder. Some ancient interpreters, dissatisfied with this gap in the narrative, argued that Cain must have died for his crime. Josephus appears unperturbed by the absence of Cain's death and, like Genesis, shifts focus away from Cain without addressing his demise. However, Philo acknowledges the issue and offers an allegorical interpretation based on two factors, the silence regarding Cain's death and the mark placed on his head by God to prevent anyone from killing him. Philo suggests that the absence of any mention of Cain's death serves as a sign indicating that he was not subject to mortality as his demise is not recorded in the Book of the Law. Philo interprets the absence of any mention of Cain's death in Genesis as indicative of his perpetual existence. He sees Cain not merely as physically alive, but as a symbol representing the immortal nature of wickedness, which undergoes a continuous process of decay. This view aligns with Philo's broader critique of human depravity as seen in his analysis of the Tower of Babel narrative. In Philo's interpretation, Cain's protective mark signifies the enduring presence of evil that cannot be eradicated. This idea is reinforced by Philo's observation that Genesis does not record Cain's death, suggesting that impiety, represented by Cain, persists eternally among humanity. Philo's portrayal of Cain as the embodiment of ongoing evil places responsibility for the existence of evil squarely on Cain's shoulders. Beyond being a greedy worshipper and fratricide, Cain becomes the symbol of perpetuated wickedness in the world. Contrary to Philo's allegorical approach, other exegetes address the issue of Cain's death more directly. Pseudo-Philo, for instance, specifies that Cain lived for 730 years before his death, though the manner of his death remains unspecified. This inclusion of Cain's age at death, without further explanation, adds an enigmatic element to his narrative. Pseudo-Philo's reworking of genealogies in biblical antiquities further complicates the matter by removing references to patriarchs' deaths and emphasizing their prolonged vitality and ability to father children, even in old age. Some interpreters chose to address the absence of details surrounding Cain's death by incorporating it into their own narratives, each offering unique insights into Cain's fate and the theological implications thereof. Pseudo-Philo, for instance, specifies that Cain lived for 730 years before his death, suggesting a premature demise compared to his contemporaries. This detail, coupled with the omission of others' deaths, implies that Cain faced consequences for his actions while his relatives continued to thrive. Additionally, some interpreters, like the author of Jubilees, offered an allegorical explanation for Cain's death, linking it directly to his crime against Abel. In Jubilees, Cain's demise is portrayed as retribution for his murder, fitting within a broader interpretive framework that redefines biblical events through the lens of divine law. Similarly, the Midrashic text Agadat Bereshit connects Cain's fate to Proverbs 26:27, suggesting a form of divine retribution whereby Cain meets his end through a stone, mirroring his own murderous actions. This interpretation highlights the concept of an eye for an eye, and addresses the need for justice in the face of impious fratricide. Conversely, the Testament of Benjamin presents Cain's death as a prolonged punishment inflicted by God over the course of his life. Cain suffers seven afflictions, one for each hundred years of his existence, 
emphasizing the severity of his transgressions and serving as a warning to others who might follow in his footsteps. In each of these interpretations, Cain's death serves as a narrative device to convey theological themes such as divine justice, moral corruption, and the consequences of sin. Whether viewed as a direct consequence of his actions or as a symbolic representation of ongoing punishment, Cain's demise is integral to shaping his character and legacy within biblical narratives. Interpreters throughout history have speculated about the fate of Cain, considering various possibilities to explain his absence from the biblical narrative. One prevalent tradition suggests that Cain met his end during the Great Flood as a consequence of his wickedness, an idea originating as early as the wisdom of Solomon and echoed in later rabbinic literature. These interpretations suggest that Cain's death, while not explicitly mentioned in Genesis, occurred alongside the flood, emphasizing his role as a symbol of evil. Another interpretation, less common but still significant, posits that Cain may have taken his own life, a notion found in both the wisdom of Solomon and Philo's writings. The ambiguous language used in these texts leaves room for interpretation, with some suggesting that Cain's spiritual demise, rather than his physical death, is implied, aligning with Philo's philosophical views on the nature of life and death. Additionally, some exegetes attributed Cain's death to Lamech, drawing connections between Lamech's violent actions and Cain's fate. This interpretation hinges on linguistic parallels between Eve's declaration about Cain and Lamech's statement in his song, suggesting that Lamech may have referred to Cain as the man he had killed. These various interpretations of Cain's demise highlight the intricate nature of biblical analysis and the enduring fascination with enigmatic figures like Cain, whose story continues to provoke debate among scholars and theologians. One tradition, as recounted by Didymus the Blind, suggests that Lamech accidentally killed Cain while building a wall, combining elements from other traditions that involve Cain's death by a stone or in a house collapse. However, this story takes on different meanings depending on the interpretation, with some seeing Lamech's declaration of killing a man and a boy as a Hebrew parallelism rather than two separate events. Ancient interpreters like Ephraim offer variations on this theme, suggesting that Lamech intentionally murdered Cain and possibly his own son, motivated by concerns about Cain's legacy and familial shame. Others, like Basil the Great, view Lamech's declaration as a reference to punishment rather than literal killings, aligning with the testament of Benjamin's idea of Cain facing multiple punishments. Meanwhile, Theodoret of Seir rejects the idea that Lamech killed Cain altogether, interpreting the verse differently to imply self-judgment rather than murder. Despite objections to certain interpretations, the tradition of Cain's death by Lamech persisted and evolved over time. The Cave of Treasures expands upon this tradition, depicting Lamech accidentally shooting Cain while hunting, a story that incorporates elements from earlier traditions and adds new details, such as Cain's inability to remain still and the identity of the murdered son as Tubal Cain. The uncertainty surrounding Cain's death notwithstanding, the range of interpretations reflects an enduring fascination with biblical stories and the imaginative endeavors of ancient and medieval interpreters in unraveling their complexities. This tradition's popularity extended beyond scholarly circles, as evidenced by its depiction in church architecture, such as the pillar capital in Saint-Lazare Cathedral in Autumn, France, portraying Lamech shooting Cain with Tubal Cain's guidance. Such representations suggest that this narrative was not confined to academic discussions, but reached wider audiences, including the non-literate. The absence of Cain's death in the Genesis narrative posed a theological quandary regarding divine judgment. Ancient interpreters addressed this by elaborating on Cain's demise and introducing elements of divine retribution for Abel's murder. Some suggested Cain perished in the flood 
while others crafted intricate narratives involving suicide or Lamech's involvement in his death. Despite the diversity in these accounts, their common aim was to fill the narrative gap and ensure that Cain faced rightful consequences for his actions against Abel. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this journey, and it's been great exploring its meaning with you. If you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more engaging content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, stay blessed and keep learning.